Hello friends, today we are going to discuss our next topic to voltage doubler circuit. The name of the topic is Cockcraft Walton Voltage Multiplier Circuit. So let us start. Before this, we have studied voltage doubler circuit and cascaded voltage doubler circuit. But there are certain disadvantages to that. So, in cascaded voltage multiplier circuit, for higher voltages, which is cumbersome and it requires too many supply and isolating transformers. It is possible to generate very high DC voltage from single supply transformers by extending the voltage doubler circuit. This is simple and compact when the load current requirement is less than 1 milliampere such as for cathode ray tubes, etc. So the application of this is cathode ray tube. Cathode ray tube. So we have a voltage doubler circuit and here the steps are added up to the nth value. Like the capacitor starts from C1 Another capacitor which is added there is C2. So in voltage doubler circuit, we generally have two capacitors like C1 and C2. And the diodes which are placed are D1, D2. But as we goes on increasing the level for getting the higher and higher voltage, we start adding the capacitors into it. So therefore, the capacitor level which reaches here that can be up to C 2 N minus 1 and C 2 N. Similar way the diodes which are added there that can be added up to D 2 N minus 1 D 2 N and across that the load resistance can be added. So you can see there is a load resistance which is added with the increase in the capacitors from C1, C2, C3, C4 and so on up to C2 of N. The diodes which are added are D1, D2, D3, D4 and so on up to D2N. So we have this particular circuit called as voltage multiplier circuit where we need one transformer the input to that as AC supply. The output from that as across capacitor we get the double of the voltage as we already explained in the previous lesson. So this voltage becomes twice of V with respect to ground. The voltage across capacitor C4 with respect to ground that voltage becomes 4 times V. Voltage across capacitor C4 with respect to ground it becomes 4 times V. Same way voltage across next level if it is say C6 then the voltage will be 6 times V and so on. So that the voltage can be multiplied. So this is simple and compact when the load current requirement is less than 1 milliampere and the example already said as cathode ray tube. So valve type pulse generator may be used instead of conventional AC supply and that circuit becomes compact. So therefore we are going to use this particular circuit which is shown in the diagram. That is called as Cockcroft Cockcroft Walton voltage multiplier circuit. Cockcroft Walton voltage multiplier circuit. Now in this figure the first stage that is D1, D2 and C1, C2 and the transformer T is identical. As in the voltage doubler circuit which we have studied for higher voltage, voltage of 4, 6 up to twice N of the input voltage V the circuit is repeated with cascade or series connection. Thus the capacitor C4 that can be charged to 4 V max and capacitor C2N can be charged to 2N V 
max. So voltage across C2 will be twice of V. Voltage across capacitor C4, that is four times V, or say V max, for better understanding, voltage across C6 of next state is 6V max. If it is C twice N, the voltage will be twice N. You can see here that 6 is repeated. Here the 4 is repeated. Here the 2 is repeated, right? So as the number given to that capacitor, we are getting that much of voltage across the same capacitor. Therefore, if the capacitor is C twice N, then the voltage will be twice N V max. Twice N V max. But the voltage across any individual capacitor or rectifier is only 2 V max. So if you call, say, voltage across C4, only C4, it will be 2 V max. So how we are measuring this 4 V max, this particular voltage is measured with respect to ground or with respect to the earth terminal. Even 6 V max is with respect to earth terminal. 2N V max is with respect to N. That is 2N V max is with respect to earth terminal and so on. Right? But 2 V, if you just say the voltage across that particular capacitor is 2 V. So this 2 V and this 2 V becomes 4 V max. Voltage across C6 is again 2 V or let us say 2 V max. 2 V max. And therefore, the total voltage becomes 2 V max plus 2 V max plus this 2 V max that is 6 V max and so on. So this concept related to this voltage at double circuit, which is already studied in previous lecture, that particular lecture we have to follow. In that, the complete explanation is given considering the cycle. So I am repeating here in negative half cycle, when this side is more positive than this side, the diode D1 conducts and it charges the capacitor in anti-clockwise direction. So the potential which avails between across the capacitor is positive, negative. During next positive cycle, this side becomes positive and the other side becomes negative. So the voltage across this side with respect to positive negative terminal, which is encircled, is V. And the capacitor which is charged, this C1 is which is charged, is V. So the total voltage which is available from this point to this point, from this point to this point, is 2 V max. Now under this condition, the diode D2 conducts, and hence that charges the capacitor C2. Now that capacitor will charge to the value of 2 V max, as the potential of this particular point is 2 V max. And under that condition, this diode won't conduct. Now, if the voltage which is available here is 2V max, similar way, the next capacitor set charges and hence diode operates, which charges this capacitor C4. So now the capacitor C4 avails the voltage of 2V max only across C4. Now, the total voltage which is available across C4 and C2 is 2V max plus 2V max, that is 4V max, and so on. Now, the rectifiers D1, D3, D2, and minus 1, which are shown in the figure, operate and conduct during positive half cycle. So as I already said, during positive half cycles, it conducts. right? So during positive half cycle, it means this particular side is positive and the other side is negative. Okay. So typical current and voltage waveforms that we are going to study for the same. So the voltage on C2 is the sum of the input as V and the voltage across condenser C1. Okay, The mean voltage on C2 is less than the positive peak charging voltage. The voltage across other capacitors C2 to C2N can be derived in the same manner. And from that difference between the voltage across the previous capacitor and the charging voltage, finally the voltage after 2N stages will be VAC of N1 stage, N2 stage, and so on. So by considering this, the ripple voltage del V, which we have already studied in the previous waveform, del V is basically the drop in voltage. 
del V is basically the drop in voltage and that voltage is called as ripple voltage. That voltage is called as ripple voltage. The ripple voltage and the voltage drop delta V in cascaded voltage multiplier circuit will be derived. So here I'm going to give you the only equations that derivation is not so important. Now we have to understand the concept related to the waveforms. The waveforms which are shown in the figure. Uh, this is what the schematic current waveform across the first and last capacitors of the cascaded voltage multiplier circuit. Then this is the voltage waveform across the first and the last capacitors of the cascaded voltage multiplier circuit. So in this case, again, you will find there is drop in voltage and that voltage is almost double every time. That voltage is almost double every time, okay? So now I'm going to give you the equation so that from that equations, you can solve the numericals. So the ripple voltage is given by this equation. Ripple voltage is called as, it is represented as del V, which is equal to I be the current in milliampere frequency divided by frequency multiplied by the net capacitance multiplied by N and be the number of stages n plus 1 divided by 2. So this is what the equation for del V. Now the percentage ripple that can also be find out. So percentage ripple is equal to del V multiplied by 100 divided by n into V max and be the number of stages. Like in the above diagram, the number of stages is up to twice n minus one. Same way, the voltage drop or regulation can be calculated. Delta V is equal to I upon F into C in bracket two by three N cube plus N square upon two minus n upon six, where n be the number of stages, i be the milliampere current, f be the frequency, and c be the equivalent capacitor. The regulation, that is percentage regulation, that can be calculated is equal to del V upon twice n into V max. Here also it is twice n into V max as the number of stages is up to twice n. As the number of stages is up to twice n. So therefore it is twice n. Then the optimum number of stages, the third parameter can be calculated. So n optimum is equal to root of V max into F into C divided by current I. So this gives you the optimum number of stages for the maximum voltage which will appear. So that's all with this voltage multiplier circuit called as Kopp-Kraft-Volton voltage multiplier circuit.